for Beautiful Black Boys Who Believe in a Better World by Michael W. Waters, illustrated by Keisha Morris. May I grow locks, Dad? asked Jeremiah. Sure, said his father. You still need to comb your hair every day until it gets long enough, said Mom. I promise I will, said Jeremiah. I can't wait to see my new locks. Maybe next week. His parents chuckled. It will take longer than that, said Dad. But just wait and believe. One day it will happen. A few days later, Jeremiah saw a picture on his dad's computer. Who's that, he asked. What did he do? That's Trayvon Martin, said Dad. He was a young man walking home from the store. He didn't do anything. Still, someone hurt him and he died. Dad shook his head. It doesn't make sense. Jeremiah agreed, but he didn't want to talk anymore. One day much later, Jeremiah asked, Dad, who's that on TV? Why is he lying in the middle of the street? That's Michael Brown, said Dad. He was 18 years old and on his way to college. He was hurt very badly and he died. A new image appeared on the screen. Many people say he had his hands raised when he was shot. Those people are on TV, marching to remind us. Jeremiah didn't understand. Why would somebody shoot someone who just has his hands in the air? It doesn't make sense, Dad said. Not at all. But Jeremiah didn't want to talk anymore. Did you hear that? Jeremiah asked one evening. It sounded like gunshots. I heard it, Dad said, and I'm going to see what's going on. Oh, no, you aren't, said Mom. Call 911 and stay here with us. Mom and Dad guided Jeremiah and his sisters, Hope and Liberty, away from the windows and into the hallway. Why are they shooting, asked Jeremiah. I don't know, son, said Mom, but we're safe in here. Jeremiah didn't want to talk anymore. The family stayed in the hallway for a long time, and he and his sisters drifted off to sleep in their parents' arms. We will never forget. Jeremiah read the words from his dad's newspaper one morning. Forget what? These people were at Bible study at Mother Emanuel AME Church in South Carolina, Dad answered. A young man came in and studied with them, but then he started shooting. The people who died are called the Charleston Nine. AME? Just like our church. But why would anyone want to do that at church? Asked Jeremiah. Why did he shoot them? Because of the color of their skin, said Dad. Because they were black? That doesn't make any sense, said Jeremiah. No, it does not make any sense at all, said Dad. But Jeremiah didn't want to talk anymore. Where were you? Jeremiah said when Dad came home after a long day away. I was worried. I'm sorry, son, said Dad. I was invited to speak at the rally and the march for the two men who were killed by police officers this week, Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. But afterwards, there were gunshots, and it took a while to make sure everyone was okay. Oh, no, exclaimed Jeremiah. I'm glad you're okay, too. So am I, said Dad, as he squeezed Jeremiah in his arms. So am I. Dad, what are all those blue ribbons for, said Jeremiah, as the family drove to church one Sunday. It looks like they're everywhere. Remember when Mom and I were downtown and someone started shooting? Five Dallas police officers died that day, said Dad. It was very sad. The blue ribbons honor them. Jeremiah watched the endless blue ribbons passing by. He didn't want to talk anymore. Dad, what is this vigil for, said Jeremiah one afternoon. What's a vigil, asked Hope. Yeah, what's a vigil, said Liberty. It's when people gather to remember someone who has died tragically, Mom told them. Daddy is speaking here tonight. <sighs> who died now, asked Jeremiah in a frustrated huff. What happened? A young man named Jordan Edwards, said Dad. He was 15 years old and riding in a car when he was shot and killed by a police officer. That makes no sense at all, said Jeremiah. You're right, son, said Dad. You're right. But Jeremiah didn't want to talk anymore. In the car on the way home from the vigil, Jeremiah thought about all that he had seen and heard. He imagined Jordan, the Dallas police officers, Philando, Alton, the Charleston Nine, Michael, Trayvon, and others with names that he didn't know. Later that night, Jeremiah came into his parents' room. Mom, Dad, I'm ready to talk. Okay, son, said Dad, we're listening. Jeremiah took a deep breath. I am tired of people hurting each other. 
I'm tired of people shooting each other. I'm tired of people killing each other. I'm tired of people hating each other just because they are different or because of the color of their skin. You know what, said Dad? We're tired of that too. Is there anything we can do about it, asked Jeremiah. We're trying to, said Mom, and we believe that one day things will change. That's why we vote, said Dad. That's why we march in the streets, said Mom. That's why we pray, said Dad. That's why we organize people in our community, said Mom. That's why we speak out against injustice, said Dad. That's why we give money to important causes, said Mom. That's why we write books and articles, give lectures and interviews, said Dad. That's why we love those around us, said Mom. Jeremiah, every day there are people working to make this world a better place for you and your sisters and many others, and we are working with them, said Dad. When we look at you and your sisters and all your friends, we have great hope for the future. We believe that your generation can work to change the world too. Jeremiah thought about that. It's like my hair. You told me my locks would take a long time. I just had to wait and believe, and with a little help, it happened. His parents smiled. Yes, it happened. I know I can't vote yet, but I will, said Jeremiah. If you let me, I can march. I can already pray, and I'll keep praying, and I can give some of my birthday money to someone who needs it. And when I see something wrong, or if I see someone hurt or bully someone else, I can speak up and get help. I can change the world. Yes, you will, son, said Dad. We know you will, said Mom. Jeremiah lifted his head, his long locks dangling, and proclaimed, Yes, we will.